Okay, welcome back. Today, this episode, we're going to be breaking down my fight on one championship against Mohammed bin Mahmoud, Jordan boy. Okay, this episode is sponsored by Caldera Labs. They are a male skincare company. Um, basically, I've always neglected uh, my skincare, but now, as obviously, as I'm getting older, I've got to look after it a little bit more. I don't want to actually be looking as old as I am. Um, all these products are absolutely amazing. So you've got here, this is the, the clean slate. This is twice a day in the shower, morning and evening. This is a, a balancing cleanser, um, just like a, fa a face wash. Then after this, we go to the base layer, just a moisturizing cream. Again, twice a day after the clean slate, you use this one. Just uh, like your regular moisturizer, but it makes your, your skin nice and soft, nice and smooth. From there, we've got the Icon. Now, obviously, if you're, you're like me, you're in the gym a lot, you're tired. When I wake up on the morning, I start to feel the bags under my eyes and stuff like that. This sorts them right out. Uh, this is an amazing product. Uh, it's a rejuvenating eye serum. And then this one, one of my favorites, this is the good. Uh, I use this every night before bed, and this is a, a, a multifunctional serum. You put this on your skin, it starts to make it feel a little bit tighter, makes it look a little bit smoother, it gives it that little bit of an extra glow. Okay, so again, use code Kicking It for 20% off and free shipping. Uh, that's for all Caldera Lab products. So basically, I'm gonna I'm gonna break this one down because although it was only a, a, quite of a bit of a, a quick demolition job, really, the story in the backdrop to it was uh, it was quite important. It was, I needed to pull some out of the bag in this fight here. This was my third fight and one championship, and my first two had been against two elite, high-level champions. So my first one was against Petch Morakot, who was the champion in the weight above me. Uh, most people know he was reigning champion for a, a long, long time in that weight until he, he lost against Tawan Chai. But he, he was he was on an incredible winning streak up until he uh, got the belt took off him but yeah my first fight on one was against him now like a complete idiot I took this on one week's notice at the weight division above which was ridiculous I remember the fight was in December and obviously I, I just, it, December it was Christmas in the UK so I'd stopped stopped my training well I was still ticking over but I'd stopped my, any hard training i have been joining in with the Christmas festivities and all the rest of it and then we got a call at the right at the beginning of December you want to fly to Malaysia in six days and fight with Petch Morocco and I said well I'm not going to make weight because it's Christmas I'm, I've been eating I've been drinking I've been on nights out Christmas nights out etc etc and uh, they went oh don't worry it's at the weight above so like an idiot I just straight away I didn't even think twice I just went yep yeah, I'll do it within an hour or so there'd been a contract e emailed over I'd signed it I went straight to the gym and kicked the pads and I realised how like out of shape I actually was and how far, how so far away from fight fitness I was um, and I just thought oh well the only saving grace is at least I don't have to diet to make weight so I'm not going to have to kill myself because I'll walk in round around 71 72 kilos at the time and the fight was at 70.3 yeah so there was gonna be no issue making weight so yeah i trained for three days or four days then i hopped on the plane and I flew over to malaysia for the fight week i did a few sessions in malaysia when it was absolutely boiling hot and i realized how unfit i actually was so i just thought right, i'm gonna have to try and knock him out now if anyone's seen pech morocot fight um, you'll know he's renowned for having a fucking absolute granite iron jaw he's beat some of the best fighters on the planet like sanchai sex and all, the, all those guys Pep Bunchu he's a, he was an absolute animal when he used to fight in the stadiums and he proved when it were on one he's, he's got a, a cast iron jaw beat a lot of top top level fighters uh, throughout his career and he'll, he'll go down in history as one of the all time greats so round one pretty much I lit him up but like, if it was in the smaller four ounce gloves which obviously all the fights in one now they have to be in four ounce gloves if it's a Muay Thai but back then it were um it would, they were a mix and we fought in the 8 ounce boxing gloves oh no we were in 10 ounce boxing gloves because obviously we were over 70 kilos so we fought in 10 ounce and if it was in the 4 ounce ones maybe some of the punches that I hit him with because I did hit him with some pretty hurtful shots maybe they would have had a bit more of a, an effect on him or maybe I'd have just smashed my fucking hands to pieces on his concrete head so I'm, I'm not sure which which way that had gone because he, he has an absolutely ridiculous cast iron jaw which I found out um, I, I thought I lit him up pretty good in the first round and I, I thought I was ahead in the second round as well but then he just fucking he, he stepped forward and hit me with a massive elbow it which hit me all like, on the on the neck area and I got up and I beat the cow but the referee waved it off that was completely stupid on my part I mean I look back to obviously I, I well it I don't like saying I regret things. But when I look back at my career for one championship, I wish that I'd have uh, jumped in at my own weight, had a full camp, and I'd have got another win under my belt. And then I did it again for my next fight. My next fight were against Rodlick. And 12 weeks prior to this fight, I'd just had surgery. And the doctor said, 
do no, <laughs> you'll be back full training in 12 weeks and I'd just got the contract proof of the Rodlet fight and I thought well fuck that I'm gonna fight in 12 weeks so yeah the first six weeks was just all rehab work and then I only had six weeks till the fight just to try and blast my fitness up so I had to get my weight down I had to get my fitness up all within the space of six weeks so there wasn't much of a game plan going into the, the Rodlet fight either so my first two fights were against two elite level ties two absolute rock hard bastards I didn't really have a proper camp for either of them so when I look back on that and I think oh I wish I'd have just give it an extra month or I wish I'd have just done this and it's all in hindsight really but when I look back on it and I think I wish I'd have just especially the first one I probably shouldn't have done that against Petch Morocco although it were a fighters fight and all that business but I've had enough fights in my career and stuff that I don't need anything to prove to anyone however yeah it was a fucking stupid mistake on my part and then I did it again against Rodlick and if I'd have just waited a little bit longer obviously I wouldn't have even fought against Petch Morocco I'd probably fought someone in my own weight division and the Rodlet fight I, I reckon if I'd have had a full camp like, I was winning that fight comfortably until I took a stupid eight camp and he, he punched me up back at here and, and my balance just went but if I'd have had a full proper solid camp for that not just, just coming out of surgery and then jumping straight in I think I'd have stopped Rodley however like I said it's all hindsight so obviously there was a, a lot riding on this fight now against Mohammed bin Mahmoud and I'd watched him fight a few times so when I fought Petch Morocco he actually fought on the same show and he knocked out a Greek guy in the first round with a head kick and then an el knocked him down with a head kick got up and knocked him out with an elbow and he looked decent in that but to be fair to the Greek guy he wasn't a very high level fighter he, he was alright but that's about it I'd seen him give Panakos Youssef from the UK I'd seen him give him quite a hard time Panakos won that fight on points and he'd give Panakos a few problems but I think that was only down to the fact that he fractured Panakos's cheekbone or eye socket in the first round with he threw some um, I can't remember it, like a push kick to the face or an elbow or something like that but and it caused some damage to Panikos's eye because I thought Panikos would have schooled him a bit more than he actually did but he, he lost that on points but where I actually saw him fight Andrew Miller and Andrew Miller bullied him so going into this fight I thought well I'd literally the, the game plan I knew I had to pull something big out the bag here to get me sent back after losing my first two fights so there wasn't much of a game plan I just worked my fitness my speed and my power and I, my game plan was to, to just go in there and literally just punch his face in basically I knew I was stronger than anyone he'd fought on one before and I, I'd, I'd watched so I had literally I, I'm, I, I didn't have any respect for him whatsoever my plan was to just walk him down walk through him and then just blitz him basically and just put it on him when the fight starts you'll see the first thing he does is he's not a southpaw fighter the first thing he does he steps into southpaw if you play step, let's get it get, let's get it going and I'll talk us through what's going down if you just press play mate and we'll we'll get this on the road so as you see we touch club straight away and he's gone straight into southpaw now he's not a southpaw fighter like he he, all, every time I've seen him fight, and I've seen him fight plenty of times, he's orthodox. So this told me straight away that he was scared of my low kick. Now this is, if you just pause it just one second, mate. Now this has been a bit of a curse for me throughout my career. A lot of people are, are so worried about my low kick that they'll try and take away my best weapon by going southpaw. Now this is a mistake on their part straight away because if, if they're not used to fighting southpaw, which I've never seen him fight southpaw in any of his other fights, then they're all, not only are they taking away one of my best weapons, but they're taking away all their own. Uh, I and mean, it's just telling me straight away that they're scared. So I always, I always think to myself in my head when they do this, I think just stop being a pussy. Just stand there and try and block it or just stop being a little bitch real basically it, it does my head in i do it does my head in i just think to myself just fucking you're taking away your all your entire best weapons your arsenal the, the only fighter who's been able to do this to me successfully with fabio pinka and that's because he one he's fucking amazing and two he's just as good in southport as he is in orthodox so i totally get why he did that because he fought me basically in southport for the near enough the entire fight and didn't want to change and i get that because he's just as good in both like but when you've got someone who's not very good in one as they are in the other then it doesn't make no sense to me i always just think like just stop being a bitch do you try and block the low kick so yeah but anyway let's get it going again but yeah like i say like my game plan here i was just feeling out and i was just gonna wait for him to try and get him to engage with someone and obviously it was taking a little bit longer than I actually thought. I thought, if I don't throw something, I don't... Cause when, when you're fighting someone who you think scared straight away, which I knew he was, you don't want to throw something with too much power and scare him off even more or throw something too vicious. So I was just trying to throw a few light, light techniques just to have a little look. And I wasn't even really making any attempt to block any of his techniques either, really, if you watch what I was doing. He's kicking me legs and stuff and I'm not really blocking it. And I remember, him, I remember him kicking me across body soon, and I was just trying to like throw some light-hearted stuff just to get him to, just to get him to engage a little bit more than he was. Because obviously, 
I'm the one walking forward. He's on the back foot. He's the one putting himself to the ropes. And I had to get him to to engage a little bit, like like that there. And if you go back to that, that would just that, you went back to exactly what I said about the game plan. What like when I caught his kick there, I thought right, I've got a chance here. And I just there were no thought process whatsoever in what I just did. Then I just absolutely swung for the hills. Probably a good job that that were absolutely miles away because if it were a little bit closer, it might have just scared him off a little bit. Like that, there, we're absolutely miles away. Um, but again, like, I'm, I wasn't really making any attempt to block any of his stuff. I just had to try and get him out of his shell a little bit, try and get into him engaged. Like, he's. <laughs> and then they said, I'm gun shy here. I wasn't gun shy. I was trying to get him to engage, which I do now. But without. When I there, bang. So I, like I said, I was I had to get him to make a mistake because he was so being so negative. When you're fighting a negative fighter who's going on the back foot and they're throwing flicky stuff at you and they're not really engaging and it, it's tough to try and bring them out of the shell. So all I would do in there is just throw him. everything that I threw for that first minute and half of that round was no more than fifty percent other than that stupid ridiculous hook that missed by a mile. So that, that's what I had to do. I had to try and get him out to engage. And the, the second he did, as soon as he stepped into me, I'm not sure what he was even going to step forward and do, but I just knew he. Would, he'd start, finally stepped into my range instead of stepping back out of my range so I, I could let something go with some venom to play it there and you'll see him step forward he stepped straight into my strongest weapon which is obviously my left hook there you go when I was looking at him here as well like the noise the hook made off his face I knew he was all over the place here so again caution got thrown to the wind and now we're all, I would just try to finish him here if you stop here if you go back just push it back a little bit obviously when we go into the clinch that's not where I want it to be this is one of my favourite techniques so I teach this one a lot in the clinch I push his head back with my left hand and I bring the right elbow up through the middle when I break the grip off so if you just play it Yeah, we're in there now, so I push, look, I'm pushing, I've got my right arm on the inside, my left is over his right, I, I push his head back to make the space, and the right elbow comes up through the middle, bang there. That's one of my favourite techniques when, when you're, you're inside in the clinch. Now, to be honest, this should have been stopped here, because he were absolutely fucked. It did end up getting him hurt pretty badly, it was, when you see, when I actually finish him now in a minute, he was absolutely, he was paggered and he was out. So, like, if you watch him here, watch, watch the state of him, how long, one, how long it takes him to beat the count, two, he has no idea what planet he's on, and three, when he stands up, he can barely put his hands up when the referee says, do you want to continue? 100% he should have been stopped there. Actually, when I'm running across the ring to him, I remember thinking to myself, he's absolutely fucked here, but obviously... My my job is to make sure he gets put away and I didn't do it with any finesse whatsoever <laughs> when, I when I finish him off because like I said I needed a big win I needed to finish him off and get me send like get my, my reputation back up there after the two previous losses and yeah there's no technique whatsoever if you just press play you just see me run across ring and start swinging like it's Saturday night outside a kebab shop <laughs> but like look at state of him like, when the ref tells him to come forward he can barely move so like that look he's he, And then, yeah, and, that, and that's that. But, yeah, it were... Um, I don't even know how I got cut on top of my head there. Like, I've got paper skin me. I've got that much scar tissue all over my head over all years of fighting. That it doesn't take much to... To, to bust me open but yeah that was a, a good win for that it was solid and I, I did it in a fashion that I'd, I'd seen him fight a few other decent level fighters and none of them just had blitzed him like I did there so it, I made a bit of a statement for for that one as well Um, I'd, I'd had some wins in between this it was just outside of one championship where I'd had my wins so my confidence was pretty high still Um. It was nice to get the win in Bangkok. Obviously, I've had a lot of my career fighting in Bangkok when I used to live in Thailand, and uh, I'd not fought there for quite a while. So it was nice to uh, to get back in and, and win in Thailand in front of all ties and stuff like that. So yeah, it were a, yeah, it were a good feeling. But th this shot here, watch his eyes roll into his head. To be fair, he did very very well to get up from that because when he watch his eyes here, he looks back at. The, you can see, look his eyes. He's he's, he's on planet Zog. He did very, very well to get up from that. But the second knockdown, he definitely shouldn't have been allowed to carry on from. That's about it. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it, really. Okay, hope you enjoyed uh, that breakdown, short and sweet. But um, yeah, any other fights that you want to see me break down, whether they're mine or someone else's, bang them in the comments below and we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do.